This is the last one in a group of four clips that cover the first section or the first third of this bit of the course. Genes, alleles and phenotype. In assessments you'll be sure to be asked how genes and alleles, different copies of those genes, produce different phenotypes. How different versions of the hair colour gene could, for example, produce black or ginger hair. And this is best done using a well-labelled diagram to support what you say. And I emphasise well-labelled. We're going to go through the steps to build up such a diagram. Start by drawing a homologous pair of chromosomes. Remember these are chromosomes that are the same shape and size and contain the same genes. So each allele of the hair colour gene will be on the same place of those two chromosomes. Show these chromosomes are homologous by making your chromosomes the same length and same shape and give them the same number. Any number will do, just the same number to show that they're a homologous pair. So here's our two chromosomes. I've chosen to call them chromosome 4. I've emphasised that they're a homologous pair and therefore they both have the hair colour gene in the same place. Enlarge those chromosomes to show the double helix and draw in some paired bases. Six or eight pairs will be plenty. Label the same part of both chromosomes the hair colour gene. Include the area with the bases. Mutate one base pair in the second chromosome to give a different version of the gene, a different allele. So here it is, it's our homologous pair and on the right hand side I've changed the base order of the sequence of the hair colour gene. In your answer I don't mean that you're going to do a series of diagrams, I'm just showing you the logic of how we're building this diagram up. The order of the bases is now different, so the instructions on which amino acid to choose to build the protein are now different, and so a different protein is going to be made. One allele may produce protein causing black hair colour, and I've given that the letter B, and the other allele may make or give the instructions for the cell to make a protein causing ginger hair and I've given that the little b. So now I've added that to my diagram. On the right hand side there is the ginger allele, little b, and that contains the instructions for the cell to make a protein that causes ginger hair. With a slightly different base order, the black allele, big b, will give the cell instructions on how to make a protein that will cause black hair colour. In this particular example, the black hair colour being laid down in the hair shaft will overwhelm any ginger colour that's present. And so the person with these two alleles, a big B for black and a little b for ginger, will end up with black hair. Therefore, because black is seen as a feature in the person when they have one of each allele, we say that black is dominant and we give that allele the capital letter. Ginger is therefore recessive, the opposite to dominant, and it has a small letter. So now you can see your definition for dominant and recessive. A dominant allele is expressed in the phenotype or the features even only one copy is present. So big B big B and also big B little b allele pairs will both cause black hair. To see ginger hair in a person the big B or dominant allele must be absent. Both alleles that are there must both be recessive little b's. So here we have genotype and phenotype. Genotype are the actual two alleles that a person has. The person with black hair can be big B, big B, or big B, little b. Remember, big B stands for black hair because that's the colour you see when you have both alleles present. 
The phenotype is what we call the actual expression of those genes, of those alleles. So this person is black hair, they have the black hair phenotype. The genotype little b, little b produces the phenotype of ginger hair. The big B is absent and that's a requirement to see the recessive phenotype being expressed in a person.